Ying, thank you so much for joining us again. We have another super exciting episode. I have Josh Siegel with me today, and we're going to be talking about numerology and a few other really key things in the predictive world of metaphysics. So um, anyway, I, I'd like to talk about you, but I would rather you introduce yourself, and then I have a couple of surprise things to tell you about you. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> I like surprises. It's just small, but, but I, I figured, oh, I'll save it for this show. Okay. Uh, I'm Josh Siegel. I'm a practicing numerologist. Uh, I've been uh, doing numerology, studying numerology, doing numerology sessions for over 20 years. Um, I estimated I've done about at least 20,000 sessions. That's a lot of sessions. And um, I am. How a, many hours does that break down? I don't even want to think. A You're a numbers guy. You it's, would know. It's a lot. <laughs> Believe me, it's a lot. It it. Um, you have to be uh, obsessed with what you do uh, in order to uh, be very good at it. And, um, uh, and I've been obsessed with numbers. I've been obsessed with uh, cracking the code to why we're here, answering ancient questions. Um, the reason why I think I connected to, to numbers is probably because of my, uh, my, my family background. Um, so I was adopted, my, my parents, who, um, who raised me, which were great, great folks. Wow. My mother was an academic and uh, professor at UCLA. Actually, a descendant of Albert Einstein, actually. Really? Yeah, which is always fun. Is you she know, German? When, Austrian? German? She is German. Wow. German Jew. Last name is Einstein. Really? Wow. Father was an attorney. I wouldn't say I grew up in a very spiritual family, um, but uh, they definitely stressed, you know, research and, and um, proving what you say and understanding things from a from an, a what you call a provable provable process where you can right. actually learn something and prove it right and, right and but I, that's what makes you good at what you do because you're able to back up what you say and you're you're level-headed you know I, I I say I'm where science and spirituality meet um, and I don't think that spirituality has to be always oh you know up in the stratosphere mm -hmm. that it can be very grounded there can mm -hmm. be a certain efficacy or provability to what you do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I spent over 20 years learning is what can we prove? How far can we go into cracking the human psyche? Mm -hmm. Why we're here, our patterns. I thought you were going to tell me you were an, you had an accounting background. And all of a sudden, the numbers like leaped off the page and started talking to you and told you, like, no, they, they, there's patterns here that mean something. It actually started, Like you had a spiritual right. epiphany. Well, you know, there's always that... that that time period in a person's life where there was a sort of dramatic shift. And mine was in 24, 25, um, when uh, I went through some an intense relationship and a lot of things came up and it was very psychological actually. And yeah. I'm very psychological with respect to how I analyze these numbers and these patterns. Yeah. Um, and um, the whole idea is to find the fingerprint of a person's unique life path. Yeah, um, and, yeah, that's but right. delve it in, into it in such a powerful transformational manner and to be able to show the process of life, how it unfolds, right? There's these, you, know, you talked about the predictive elements, not crystal ballish stuff, but there's certain time frames when certain types of uh, experiences are likely to happen more than others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they're, they're there to trigger certain lessons in the chart. Yeah. So, so what I was going to tell you and I was mm -hmm. going to tell them yeah. is, I don't know if you remember this, but back when you were at a place called the Bodhi Tree, which unfortunately no longer exists, it was iconic. It was one of the oldest bookstores in Los Angeles. I think they it opened in the 70s or 60s. I think they were around for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. so um, you were a numerologist there. I knew nothing about numerology, but I came to you. Do you remember me, young, younger, young me? I was four. Would have been no. younger, me too. <laughs> I, I came to you, and, yeah. and um, you... Um, you're the one who actually told me that I was a 33-6. You were the, f I mean, I don't really know any other numerologists. And yeah. I remember you looking at my husband's uh, chart, too, and you said, well, this is really interesting. You guys are, you guys are on the same, you're on the same route. You're on the same path. And he's a 33-6, and you yeah. broke that down, and you explained that to me. And we weren't married yet, but now we are. So <laughs> there I, you go. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I didn't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't remember that. 
you know, because I've done so many people. Yeah, you're 20,000. I yeah. was like, wait, maybe like, I don't know, 15,000 and uh, you're whatever. You're probably 12,342, <laughs> yeah. if I had to estimate. <laughs> Back in like 2001 or whatever it was. So, yeah. But, um, so, so did you know somebody who was, an, I mean, how did, so, you know, you grew up with the science background, which, which I did too, actually. Mm -hmm. My dad was an engineer. My mom mm -hmm. was a hygienist. And mm -hmm. when you're a spiritual person becoming awake yeah. in a, within a family that, that kind of looks at things in a very boxy way, mm -hmm. you kind of have your own reality, right? Didn't you? Like you found, or maybe numerology found you. So I grew up in a Jewish family. Um, and uh, I innately um, was interested in sort of the mysterious and the unexplained, but I didn't really know what that meant or what that looked like. Mm -hmm. So one of the natural pathways for someone from a you know culturally Jewish family is is Jewish mysticism or Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. right. right. So and this is before the Kabbalah Center and the big craze with all that stuff with Madonna. Yeah, well, it's uh, and so, Ashton. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course. And Demi. <laughs> right. So um, the idea here was um, uh, is finding some sort of, I believed at the time when I was younger that there was more to life than what I was seeing, but I wasn't taught to simply believe that such some intelligence existed to the universe, right? Although there is some interesting insights that Einstein had, you know, um, and, yeah. um, and other scientists, and today, of course, quantum physicists who definitely are seeing things in a, a, a very unique light with respect to, you know, how the universe works. Right. And the intelligence. And, and it's it. funny that it's kind of coming together. I mean, quantum physics is sort of under yeah. spirit or, or over spirituality and saying almost the same things in some ways. There's a lot of correlations between some of the cosmological or ancient teachings, you know, mm -hmm. particularly from ancient India, the Vedantic teachings, and some of the more interesting um, speculations of uh, the, the quantum physicists today. And you know, there, there's a lot of stuff. It gets quite complicated. And <laughs> to be honest with you, when, when people consult me, I don't bring up any of that crap. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, like, we <laughs> should have you come back and you will. I don't know. I think it's interesting. It's all fascinating stuff. I de definitely got exposed to not only you know the the kabbalah jewish mysticism but also that started extending out into world religion and um, mythology a mm -hmm. friend of my mother's was uh, the great writer in mythology joseph campbell oh really and um he was at the house from time to time and of course i, I was very young and i didn't know who was he get, was. giving you telling you bedtime fables or no no, no. <laughs> i was like who's this old stuffy guy with my old stuffy parents it was, it was that kind of thing. <laughs> i didn't really I don't know, you know, but it, 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 you start looking into sort of the great teachings and the, uh, the great, if you want to call it, uh, mystical. You were occult. quite, you were curious. I was curious. You were a curious and I was, kid. I was delving into a lot of that stuff. And what I found at the basis of all that yeah. was that numbers was, was a part of sort of the sacred language of the, um, of the ancient mind. And many of the great teachings, and, and, and if you want to call it, in that's my cat, by the way. I didn't want you to think there was a wild animal back there. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want you to get nervous. I'm a little nervous because this cat's uh, very aggressive and <laughs> you'll be fine. Mean, mean looking. No, he's actually very cute. <laughs> she. So the bottom line is that ultimately, I found that numbers was at the root of all sort of mystical thought. It sounds like, I mean, you could shoot me down for this, but mm -hmm. it sounds like growing up the way you did, yeah. which is similar to the way I did, it sounds like that gave you a context of feeling safe because you could prove what you were finding out within something that was familiar and acceptable. I needed to find something that was logical, workable, provable, and had the evidence-based aspect to it mm -hmm. that explained what I believed was something more to life than just random events, random occurrences, and a bunch of people walking around bumping into each other and a bunch of particles hitting each other completely by mistake because it didn't seem correct to me. Right. But you, you know, you can believe something, but you have to delve into and research and find it. And I found it in numbers and I lived my life sort of how far I could get into it to prove that life is not a series of random events, mm -hmm. that there is a destiny factor, mm -hmm. and that there is a higher purpose for life. And I sit down with clients and been doing it now for, you know, 
decades mm -hmm. altogether mm -hmm. and tens of thousands of sessions and sit down without getting any information from them other than their name and their birth date and tell them things about themselves that I shouldn't know and explain to them why they've gone through certain things in life and explain to them where the future lies with respect to making conscious decisions and choices. It, what I've proven, in my view, from after doing so many of these readings, mm -hmm. is that there is a lesson given to us at birth and that um, it is a part of why we're here and it gives us meaning to our lives and it's okay to screw up and have a dysfunctional relationship or it's okay to get off on the right, wrong foot, let's say, in your career or to struggle in certain relationship dynamics with bosses or significant others in certain areas because that is you're here to learn that and understand that and I share that with you I confirm that with you without getting any information from mm -hmm. you other than this map this fingerprint right this mathematical code to your life and once I establish that it all unfolds from there and I have to say look I do go back at times and I do nail certain types of events that I think was likely to happen right? now it's not invariably so it's not always every single case where mm -hmm. it's an infallible thing mm -hmm. there's nothing infallible um, but enough where it's beyond random mm -hmm. far more than that and what I'm doing is I'm establishing where you are and learning your lesson mm -hmm. and saying did this kind of thing happen to you during because this is what the likelihood was statistically mm -hmm. it's almost a statistical thing this is decoding your life. And then the whole idea is to have a, a transformational process whereby a person becomes awakened to their patterns mm -hmm. and then reveal why it's happening to you mm -hmm. and then helping them to see their higher purpose. You're very methodical when you explain all this. You know, it's, yeah. you know. Um, so maybe this is a good time to ask. Mm -hmm. um, you you call yourself or you call it revolutionary numerology. Yeah. So is it you that's who is the revolutionary, or is there a type of numerology that you are privy to that is revolutionizing it? It's after the many many years that I've studied this, and the case studies, and the trial and error, and the painstaking research. Right. I realized that what had been presented prior um, was a piece of the puzzle and that it could be used to change the world essentially mm -hmm. I mean I haven't done a lot in order to, to put this out to the level that I could have but you are now I am starting to do now yeah you know and some and there are certain opportunities I've had in order to do some certain media projects but I've for the most part, kept kept a low profile. So you've kind of redefined. You've you've created your own form of numerology. Okay, I didn't realize that. Yeah. It's it's it, it it is a highly sophisticated, um, holistic approach based on <laughs> on, on years of research. So hear that, you guys? I mean, just like there's holistic MDs, yeah. here is your holistic numerologist. Well, what I mean by holistic, holistic is the whole picture. Is the whole picture right? Of course. It, it's integrating a person's various different parts of who they are. Yeah. Now, when I sit down with the client, yeah. You know, another interesting thing about myself is that, um, you know, I don't really act like a generically spiritual person in the way I, I communicate with people. I kind of act like an old friend, you know. <laughs> okay. And um, you know, your old friend that knows you well that kind of busts your balls once in a while, right? And um, I'm very, typically very simplistic in the way I describe things when I'm doing a session mm -hmm. and it's about reaching people mm -hmm. and it's about understanding that everyone's different and everyone kind of responds and you have to kind of intuit that how do I connect to this person so they get what I'm saying mm -hmm. right and you have and I, and I communicate differently with different people but and see I, that's that a lot of people don't do that so yeah. your your tactic or your approach yeah. is it's my responsibility to to make sure that I bring this person in. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people are like, here's some information. If you don't get it, you know, yeah. too bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll die that's trying. Great. I'll die oh, trying. That's great. You have to, they have to get it. And I will go through anything and all kinds of, you know, like, you know, it's an interesting thing. I use a lot of humor sometimes in, 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 uh, in my sessions. And I use it to, to to get people to loosen up a little bit to make mm -hmm. it very safe and easy for them mm -hmm. a session with me is safe and easy mm -hmm. it's like I know you and I'm an old friend mm -hmm. 
and 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 you know, look, you know, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, personality wise, you know, sometimes I I use words I probably shouldn't. You know, I'm a kind of edgy person, but I do it in a way that's. Well, don't use them here because no, no, we have no, like what? a G rating. Okay. Well, I, won't. <laughs> I don't. I don't do it all the time. But what I'm saying is, I'm I'm so or or uh, organic and authentic. You're like you it. sound like you're in the moment. I'm in the moment. Yeah. And, and um and we might we might laugh hysterically together. Yeah. We might get a little sad together. Yeah. We might um have an epiphanies together. Yeah. But it's going to be a, a a wonderful journey into yourself, and it, it's very fascinating for people. So, um, so once again, I just want to let everybody know that yeah. you are Josh Siegel, and he's a numerologist. Don't forget to send us a heart or a like because that's how we know what they like to see. Mm -hmm. But, um, but, but also, um, you know, I, I want to also get into some of the other stuff we were talking about because you were yeah. saying that you're going to have a prediction for us at the end. I want them to know to stick around. We, you had said that you did a little bit oh, of numer I say maybe at the end. I'm not going to do a crystal ball thing. But. No, but you had said that you would do um, a little numerological approach to sort of where we are or where I'm going to give going. a little bit of, a little and bit I of like indication I, I want them to yeah. I want them to know that that there's yeah. like you know because that's cool I mean it, I think that that's true that there's a little bit more a, possibly more accuracy you're mm. you're read you're a pattern reader that's right and um, code breaker yeah and that it's not the name of your new book or isn't that the name that you well, were thinking about for look your book? I, I mean look, we don't know what the name's going to be just yet oh, you know okay. but uh, uh, you know I I think it was my mom that came up with Josh code like a century ago because, you know, it's, oh, well, you know, you're Josh and this is your code. So we will call it the Josh code. And so I've been using that thing. I don't think it's going to be called that. You know, look, what I'm purporting to establish is that there is a, um, well, it's, it is a revolutionary concept that essentially um, that there, the age old question is, uh, you know, is life just sort of a mistake? And um, is our lives just random events, or is there a hidden intelligence and destiny to a certain extent meshed in our free will and the choices we yeah. have? Very big on free will and changing patterns. Right, right, right. You know, I don't just tell you stuff and go, oh, okay, well, then it's all going to happen like well, this. Well, that's very comforting, you know? too, to think mm -hmm. that it's not all random and that we're co creating. You know, we're co I mean, I like to use that phrase a lot. And. Um, yeah, we do have free will. A lot of people assume that if you know your chart or if you get this information, then yeah. you're just being told something. But you're really part of the, the, the process builder. Yes, you know? it's so. totally true. For example, there might be two people with similar charts going through similar cycles. You know, there are numerological number mm -hmm. cycles that you come under yeah. from year to year and even month to month. If, like, like we had well, or have. That's right. And <laughs> Forever. You can, you can you know, make decisions, conscious decisions to not repeat patterns or to move towards a healthier lifestyle once it's exposed to you and you understand, mm -hmm. right? This is the beauty of the universe. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, <laughs> it was a truly remarkable, magnificent superstructure of, of interconnected intelligence. It's, 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 it's remarkable and it's real and it's Proven. And I'm so glad that yeah. quantum physics is coming up to meet up, to 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 meet things in the middle. Yeah. Because without that, you know, it, it sounds hokey. But now that we're getting to a place where scientists are saying that there's yeah. these random formulas that are proving to equal out, you know. Well, it's just basically we're living in a matrix, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. In the Far East and the Far East mystical teachers say that this is Maya or illusion, and I. Think what the what the hell is that supposed to mean? I mean, if I walk in front of a moving car, I'm going to get a hit. That's not an illusion. But if you understand the 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 bigger picture, there is kind of a. It's like we're living in God's reality show, you know. Like this is like boot camp like the, for like souls. Like the Truman Show for God, but with each of sort our names. Of. I mean, it's hard to explain these things. <laughs> but, but you're right. The boot you know, camp for souls. That is absolutely yeah. how I see it as well. Or else I wouldn't be able to know certain things about a person and what's unfolded. Yes, unless there right. is a, 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 right. some sort of purpose higher to that. intelligence. Yeah, and, right. and and it is at once spiritual, at universal, and scientific. It it is, I. It, it is real, and I now that I've spent all this time studying it. Right, and yeah. I'm never going to understand the giant picture. It's impossible. Right? right, but as far as what, and maybe after I'm gone, someone will take my research and take it a step further. Right, and then right. It'll continue down yeah. down the line. 
It'll the keep I, evolving. It'll keep evolving. And, um, and some of the work that came before me that actually inspired me, mm -hmm. you know, but the, I think the idea here is, is when I finally put out this book, um, and, uh, in order to, it, it is going to, you know, be a, a revolutionary idea. It's That's certainly great. not going to be another book on numerology. Right, right. Something. But you know, you the know, truth is, Josh, that we're evolving. Hum right. Humans are evolving. I mean, 15 years ago, we didn't have like cell phones and technology mm. and our brains yeah. are now, I mean, I, I noticed my own brain. I'm doing a text while I'm doing an email right. while I'm on the phone. Right. And our brains are now having to compartmentalize and, and that is going to ch cause physiological changes in our brain. Absolutely. So, so as we evolve, you know, all the structures that we use to decode our lives will also be evolving. So, right. you know, Concur. I mean, they're saying Pluto isn't even a planet. They're trying to make that evolve. But I don't believe that. I think Pluto is still a planet. And I still believe in that. And we're going to talk about that because you're also a Vedic. You also have studied and dipped into Vedic astrology. But right. first I want to, before we go into all that, I, I really also wanted to talk about how you said you had um, worked with some news sources and you did a little bit with the History Channel. Sorry about the plane. You also worked with Jim Carrey. Like, I'd like to maybe know about that. Like, what do you mean you, you worked with the news? Like, what, oh, what over that the years, uh, Over the years, I'd be contact, contacted by various networks or production companies, uh, news, in order to, um, you know, put my two cents into things, you know, numerological, this world. Wow. And um, so, uh, you know, I've been on History Channel. I did a show called Decoded, yeah, uh, which was a big show for them. Um, they flew me out to New York to decode the hidden number symbolism in the Statue of Liberty, the great iconoclastic me? structure. Yeah. Wow. And um, so, you know, it's interesting because I wrote two very sort of scholarly paper papers about uh, um, sort of the hidden symbolism dating back to mythological influences and so on and so forth. And I really wrote these, you know, I still have these these papers. I did an enormous amount of research and I had some really fascinating ideas. And I, no, 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 we don't want any of that. You know, you know, we want you to, you know, get out there and find the hidden numbers. And I um, didn't know there were hidden numbers. Well, you know, it's funny Liberty. because maybe there there was there there was uh to some degree a hidden number in the uh um, in, in the crown, that I was going to say there's num Roman numeral well, numbers, no, there, there, right? Well, there's, there are. there's there's seven, you know, the 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 crown that she wears. Yeah. Right. There, there, it's there's, like the little windows too, right? Right. Yeah. Isn't that the windows? Look, I, I I looked in all that and I saw the number seven come came up over and over and over, you know again. But it, it was I have to say that um, that it it was a little uh, when you get to TV and this, it was a big lesson for me. You know, that was the least important thing that I, you know, had discovered and gave to them. And when you do TV, a lot of the time they um, they edit you in a certain way and they try to, um, you know, sensationalize things. Yeah. And I wasn't too fond of what, what they did. And, you know, but, you know, look, I, I, I tried to find some correlation in that. And there was some interesting things with the number seven. There was. Um, but it was, th there was so much more that really was more important and they kind of took that out. You know, it's, this is TV. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, right. But so, um, what you preferred to have had in, they took out and they kept with they kept some other less relevant and stuff. blew that out of proportion. Right. And, and, right. And it, it was just you know, um, and that was a big lesson for me. And I thought you know that's that's not what I wanted really you know, yeah. and not even what I presented um, mm -hmm. uh, so much. So it uh, but there is there is uh, you know some deeper symbolism in the statue. Well, right? what did you find? What were your findings? Well, or do you, and it was done obviously with intention when they created the Statue of Liberty, those numbers were put there well, out well, of purpose. Well, she's, she's essentially, um, supposedly a, a, a kind of a remake of Libertas or, or a Roman, I think the Roman goddess of, uh, of Liberty. Yeah. But when you look in the deeper symbolism, there's, there's, there's much more, um, um, underneath that. It, and I have to say, it's certainly pre- Christian, and it's it's early pagan symbolism for the for the goddess, the archetype. There's a lot of it. Look, I don't want to get into all this stuff yeah. right now, but it, it, it I, I would say that um, that we have some curious symbolism in this country. <laughs> 
We do. Yeah, that we that, very we really do. Like on our money system, for instance, yeah, we there's have a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, symbolism. Right. And by the way, I'm not Mr. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. No, okay, but we're I not. I stick, we're not. I stick with with scholarly research. Right, that I, I can't. Right, and you being a quasi scholar. Right, right. I, I, I would say, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but 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 there was there was a bunch of interesting things that I I brought to their attention, but they yeah. didn't want to put that out there for whatever reason. They yeah. sensationalized this. Right. Well, this they had an agenda, I'm sure. Right. So that was an interesting thing. And what did you do with Jim Carrey? So there was that movie, The Number Twenty Three, that came out. Oh gosh, ten years ago, I think now. Um, this was an interesting film because Jim Carrey was um, not being Mr. Comedy Guy. It was a supernatural psychological thriller. Oh. About a um, a man who became obsessed and overtaken by the number twenty three. Apparently, there's all these something called the twenty three enigma. A lot of events and strange things that have happened in the world that are associated with the number twenty three, and um, uh, which is kind of interesting. Um, anyways, that was a very fascinating and one of the more exciting things I did because I spoke for about an hour straight about the number twenty three and, and and its connection to ancient culture and different, you know, spiritual teachings and, mm -hmm. and, and religious thought, everything from the Chinese I Ching or mm -hmm. the, uh, um, or Jungian psychology and, mm -hmm. uh, um, the Kabbalah. There's so much that I, that I was able to kind of, I just, just spoke for an hour straight and they were supposed to, I think they were supposed to, uh, edit me down to four minutes. But uh, they, they, they said they were so caught up in all that stuff that they left nine minutes, which was basically a mini documentary on numerology on the DVD special mm -hmm. features of that That's movie, awesome. Number 23. Yeah. That's cool. And that was, that was a really fun and interesting project for me. So, okay, so I, I um, skipping ahead to how you work and what numer just to give people an idea of what new, because some people don't know what numerology me means or how it works, or mm -hmm. is it just your birthday? Like I'm born the ninth. You told mm -hmm. me you were born on the 12th or is it more patterns that are deeper than that? So I do know I'm a 33 six. Mm -hmm. So how many of those are there? There's as a life million, two. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, if I'm a yeah. if I'm a thirty three six, how many life path? Like I know with astrology, there's twelve signs. Right. Are there a lot of life path choices? So like, so so there are different kinds of sixes. The reason why it's called the thirty three six is three plus three is six, so it's a form of a six. Yeah. It's a special one traditionally in traditional numerology. That's what I call it. The classic numerology thirty three six is a master number. It's supposed to have certain special destiny to it. Um, what are you? My life path number is yeah. 4711. 4711. Okay. So, um, so I think, I think the idea here is, uh, and seven and four equals 11. So I guess it's always similar to, well, it's a form of an 11, which is also a two, but traditionally yeah. with the 11, you're supposed to, these are old classic interpretations that, okay. um, that, that I think, you know, I, I, I sometimes bring up, but, but you know, there's more important things, right? Um, uh, to talk about than than some of the older views of it, mm -hmm. you know, okay. some of that stuff changed when I started to actually do trillions of these charts, and um, but but it you know I'll, I'll note that um, you know look there's different kinds of sixes there's a twenty four six right there's a sixty slash six so how do you work then if if so these are so okay so I'm getting the sense that these are older kind of methodical kind of black and white ways. And right. you've taken that and you've created, you, you're, you're getting extra information. Well, here's the thing that, and this is a really good point to bring up. In numerology and even in astrology, taking one thing out of context and running with it like sun sign astrology where people say, oh, this person's a Taurus. Right. And so therefore, that's who they are. Right. Or you have a 33-6 you understand that the meat of the chart is in the name, not in the birth date. And um, every letter equals a number, and there's a slew of numbers that are ascertained from your name. And how that's added to and connected to other numbers creates a total picture. That's why I call it the holistic approach. I see. You can never take not one number out of context. You have to look at all the numbers and how they interact with each other and put them together. The, all the idiosyncrasies, all the various different you know, strange things about yourself, right? Um, like the, you know, the person who can get up in front of, you know, thousands of people 
and, and, and uh, have a sense of confidence, right? Who um, on a one-on-one -on -one level becomes a total, you know, insecure neurotic. Mm -hmm. I say, how could that be? I mean, they yeah. have this confidence. You can be, you can be on, you know, in front of millions of people and yet on a, you're, you're so, you know, screwy. Such and, a dichotomy. And, well, but see, life is, di every person has all these unique facets. Every single person mm -hmm. has unique qualities that make them that it's that fingerprint mm -hmm. and you have to look at the totality of the chart so being a 336 you share that number with millions and millions of three and I didn't mean that I didn't yeah. mean how many people in the world are 336 right. I meant no, I how many different substructures are there there are many there are many yeah. but there, there there is a finite number right because you know names can't be this long right um, I think the longest name I ever spoke so it's so, based, so it is based yeah. on a person's name. Absolutely. Okay. Full so, name, complete name at birth. A complete name at birth. So if somebody changes their name, you still refer to the name at birth. So if you change your name later or you on get in life, married or you, you anything, take, you take on yeah. you know a, a spouse's name, what have you. The imprint of your lessons in life are still manifested when you were born. Do you look at the new name too? Uh, you know I. <laughs> These are good questions. You know, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't. I didn't know that. I, I, I actually, I actually don't very often look at the new name because because we need to see where you are and, and where you came from. Where you came from now. Right. Now there are cases where I do, and you know, sessions down the road, but we need to get down to business, right? And then you know. The, so, so what you're saying, Josh, is a person's total um, lessons, infrastructure of mm -hmm. their of who they are, their identity, their 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 fingerprint right. is in their birth name in, in and all the information is there right and believe me i grew up with massive skeptics I so, get, yeah so, that's I mean, why you're so that's but that made you who you are today it did make me who i am today so i it's not that after 22 years later i don't understand the concept that a person's name and birth date are arbitrary i i get that but it's not apparently it is not arbitrary however that works that's the mysterious aspect. Why it. people are named what they're named. It, you know, look, oh, my grandmother, you know, I was giving my grandmother's <laughs> right, middle, right. you know, my, my the, middle. The, name, the, you know, the name on the know. badge of the nurse that day. Yeah. I just couldn't think of anything. Exactly. I mean, there's it's, all so these it's strange all, things. It's, it all comes to pass as a, like a destiny kind of answer. It is what it is. I mean, you're yeah. born in that family during that time frame, right? Your mom's wacky and your dad's a workaholic, right? And this is this is what you grew up under, right? And you grew up in a small town. You grew up in a big city. All those things are that's a part of the plan. So just by doing, and you do this really quickly, because you know really somebody quickly. somebody sits. You could do it at a party. Like if you were hired for, like mm -hmm. I do a lot of events. Mm -hmm. So if you were hired for an event, you could mm -hmm. do it in five minutes. You could get a person's like life path out of you know. Right. Click out those numbers you know, for look, their I, birth I, name, and they'd be good to go. They'd know a, a lot about themselves. I did a, I shot a pilot for 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 my own show in, gosh, years ago. I think in two thousand and three, and I had a studio audience, and um, and part of you know I you know it was kind of like Doctor Phil meets <laughs> numerologist guy, and it really wasn't the format for me. Again, it's a little too stuffy for somebody. Oh, like really? Me. Yeah, okay. I, it's not me. Uh, you need coffee around you. I get the sense Something of like coffee that. and like scones or, or you I, know, some classical music playing or coffee house no, music. Some classic soul would actually yeah. help. So <laughs> a little bit of Al Green would, would help out. Um, so the idea was uh, to pick out people in the in the audience. Right. Right. And do these quick shotgun sessions. Right. Them. And what you it, it Look, it's not something I, you know, I want to do all the time because the real work happens over a period of time. You know, you people are complex, and you, and you need time to kind of delve into you, it. So you really need to marinate and digest and study how it's all coming together. I mean, just like studying a chart, I guess. I mean, there's there's going to be some things that I sometimes the chart speaks so loudly. Yeah, in one particular area. Yeah, I'm just like, wow. Okay, you're yes. you're you're changing your job right now after many years. And um, and you're probably going into something artistic, even though you've had a sort of an analytical job. Oh my God, how did you know that? Right. Because it was so blatant. Right. You know, some charts are harder to read than others, and some, some of them I have to really think and, you know, integrate these numbers, and it's so contradictory. Some people are very complex. That other times it's just so, boom, 
you know I get it you know the same thing happens with readings with tarot mm -hmm. there's yeah. there's sometimes that you know it's just there's just one through line that you have to express yeah and all the other stuff is secondary yeah and it's funny how the universe I think what that is really is the universe communicating with you as a channel to get the message out well there, there there's patterns that are sometimes very clear for example the same type of number that shows up over and over again in someone's chart yeah right there's and there's different numbers that have a similar effect and if I see that I meet and then I look at the time frame that they're under mm -hmm. you know I look at the cycle of when I'm being contacted for a session so why are they contacting me right now what are they going through the numbers will show that mm -hmm. you know and then sometimes there's a link with the you know the, the more what we call it the lesson numbers in the chart mm -hmm. and the cycle that they're in and then there's this sort of kismet where it all comes to, that's the beautiful thing about it it's it's really remarkable mm -hmm. how sometimes it's so blatant yeah and then I go boom and there it is right and, and you know a lot of the time it's confirming things for people yeah and because we're unsure we live in this crazy world and you know there's so many you know unstable things going on and and, and what are we doing and we're worried about our, our finances and our relationship and the political world is really topsy-turvy right now no matter what side you're on yeah right and, and 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 I think it's really important that to understand that there is still an intelligence occurring here we're going through crazy times but you know what there are times when we need to go through crazy times for development right there's still a formula there's still there's still the universe doesn't cease to exist yeah and the intelligence behind it just because things seem to be random or crazy it's something to remember and that's what you're bringing order to people's lives yeah. right while maintaining the freedom for them to choose mm -hmm. and the free will to create what they want you know I, I almost I hate to say this but I, I almost feel for people that don't like for instance my parents like mm -hmm. they don't believe in any of this they, mm -hmm. they don't believe in a higher power they you know they, they watch the news a lot and that becomes mm. kind of their right. their pull, but it's so it's so um, calming to to you know when you see this frenetic chaotic mm. energy around us, right. and you hear about it, and every you know people are going through stuff, and just to realize that um, it's happening as it should be happening, and there's a reason that it's happening. You know, it's it's a good it's so a good, there is there it's a is, good viewpoint. So each one of us has our own matrix. You know, yeah. attract certain things in life. Like I can look at a chart, um, and it's sometimes you know funny. But you know, you look at a chart and you say, okay, you know, let's say I have a female client. And I said, okay, well, you know, if they're heterosexual, you know, I'll say, look, you attract this kind of a man, and have. Uh -huh. and, and they're like, oh god, that was my <laughs> ex-husband or that was my ex-boyfriend, right? Right. And there's certain things about them. They're like, oh god, why did I attract that person? Well, because you're, you're, you're learning and growing and evolving through something inside of yourself. So we live in our own little matrix and then we attract things. Right. You know, I'm and, so glad that movie was made because now everybody understands that concept. <laughs> so now understand that each one of us are living our own matrixes and we're all kind of bouncing off each other. And right. then there's the, sort of the larger matrix, you know, the collective. Right? Yeah. And there's a lot of thought patterns going on in a subconscious level that lead to movements. Well, that's the collective. That's the collective. Mm -hmm. So we're going through an interesting stage. Now, I don't speak in, you know, look, I have no problem with, you know, very spiritual people. I do consider myself a spiritual person of some sort. Mm -hmm. I'm not very new agey, you know. What's the difference? Well, I think I need a little bit more verify. Verify. Yeah. A little bit yeah. more solidification. A little right. bit more works, doesn't work. Right, kind of exactly. Um, and and um, so I'm still my, my mother's son. I mean, she, you know. Believe me, when I started looking at these, into this are stuff. your adopted. Oh parents. yes. Did you ever meet your real parents? I'm just. Curious. Oh yeah. You did. Yeah, my birth father was a bit of a rock star in the '60s. He had a hit song in 1966. You have all these famous these parents that are tied. You have like all these parents that are tied to famous people. Well, I guess. I suppose. Yeah. Maybe because you you grew up here. Maybe that's why. <laughs> so we, was your numerology consistent with our? Does our numerology reflect our parents? absolutely so I have a question for you then incontrovertibly so so was it more with your adopted parents or was it more with your um, both. birth parents or, or both. just different ways both because both because when you're adopted um, it there's a primal wounding from that right 
um, because you're ripped away from your biological mother and there's a, a bonding that happens from that. And then, um, and, and so here's another thing. I understand the idea or the concept of nurture versus nature, mm -hmm. right? Or your, your environment versus your, your encoded DNA. Right. Essentially what I'm looking at is, is, is your, you know, if we have numbers to describe one's physical DNA, you know, there's like a map, a numerical map to our physicality. Right. In a DNA strand, it shows your eye color, your hair mm -hmm. color, certain predisposition to disease. A lot of things are yeah. mapped out numerically in the human DNA. Why wouldn't there be a, a, a code for why we're here and other aspects of our life? You know, but um, but I, right. it, 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 there was certain things that I got in my genes from my my, my you know, musician, hippie, <laughs> you know, creative, intuitive. Yeah, rock starry parents, birth parents who right. I didn't meet until I was eighteen and nineteen, Fascinating. respectively. And then, but I was, you know, I was. Are you raised, still in contact with them? Well, my birth father has pa since passed, but I'm oh, very, okay. very close with my birth mom. Nice. And um, but I now have a good relationship with my mom who raised me, which is she was quite, you know, a little more uh, controlling. Well, she's you know the old school German Jew thing is yeah. is, is yeah. they don't screw around. I yeah. Mean, there's a. A well, she was a she was a descendant of Einstein, and she was like, "You're going to be like an Einstein," and you were with numerology. I, I suppose so. <laughs> you know, I don't think she sees it that way completely. But she she's uh, in in her elder years. You know, my mom's in her nineties now. My parents were quite. They quite were old. older when they adopted you. They were quite old when they adopted me. Um, she uh, she's she's seeing things in a different light. You mm -hmm. know. But um, certainly was a major skeptic about a lot of this stuff. But you know what? I'm, I'm happy for it. Because I don't think I would have had the, this. It's hard to explain, but I think in, intuitively, as far as innately who I am, I, I, maybe it's the hippie spiritual you know, parents. My, my birth mom's fairly spiritual. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I'd be anywhere near as a accomplished in the work that no, I've done right, if I did not right. grow up in a household right. that said, you've got to prove what you do. It's got to work. You have to be practical. You've got to be practical. Right. And I don't think I'd be anywhere near where I am today if it wasn't for her. My, my tough, relenting, you know, tough love, you know, Einsteinian parent. So when you, so I, I'm just realizing like this is fascinating, but I want to make sure we get to everything. When you just really quickly to sum it up so that mm -hmm. they know, mm -hmm. when somebody comes to see you, mm -hmm. and we did a great job describing how it work, how you work it, mm -hmm. but are you basically, um, I guess you answered it already because you said that's kind of like like the real, you know, black and white way, but you basically have, with numerology, a life path, a soul path. There are about six numbers. Got it. Okay. Um, I just want them to know that. I say about because it depends right. on some things. Okay. Um, and um, each number, um, I, I'll go through each number. Right. But it depends what I see because I do every session differently. Because you're very holistic. But, but, the, but the bread of it or the bones of it yeah. is that there's these different categories That's right. that you pull together to, so that they know what they're working on in this lifetime. Oh, believe me, I make it so abundantly clear. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, 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 if you can't... If I think it's time for me to book a new session with you. Listen, it was if, too long ago. You don't even remember me. If, if, <laughs> if uh, oh God, I, I walked down, down the street and people, you know, like the other day, it was a, a woman and a man with a baby stroller. Uh -huh. The woman came up to me and goes, do you remember me? And I'm saying, I'm so sorry. I said, so many people. She goes, well, this all happened in but the But I time bet frame. you remember the numbers. Well, him and the, the baby. That That's you, Josh. Like, you you, yeah. you saw that. Now, look, it, 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 these, these are possibilities, you know. Um, uh, some people might think that I'm able to, you know, predict the things. But what it, you're doing is you're pulling out what they need to hear at the moment, and it's confirmation, and then their life moves forward. Their life the moves forward. The block drops and away. And there are time frames that are more, things, that things are more likely to happen than others. Yeah. It's not this sort of, set in stone sort right. of thing it, 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 it's it's it, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at so many different things you know yeah. saying, look there's a distinct possibility of this but shouldn't we look at what you need to do to get there yeah yeah i, I can't stand sessions where people predict stuff without like you have no choice in the matter right it bothers the hell out of right now there's a lot i mean I, there are a lot of um people that work in this field that Sometimes yeah. their readings are, are more limiting than helpful, and I, I do see that. You got to get to the promise, but that's land. in every field. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, in every field, there's there's you know it's up to us to kind of 
be able to yeah. feel who's going to work best for us. Right. So, um, so can we go into just slightly? Because um, mm -hmm. you're one of the very own, the very few people I know who knows anything about Vedic astrology. So we're going to do a little bit of a flip-flop now, guys, because Josh is, he's really methodical and <laughs> he knows about Vedic astrology and I want to just do a quick thing well, on the comparison. Like, why is it, do people think it's so predictive and people get married in India based on their charts and yeah. thousands oh, of years do. old and so, there's probably less divorces because of it. <laughs> Maybe they're not allowed to yeah. get divorced. Um, they get stoned. I don't know the statistics on that, but who knows? Could very well be true. Um, Vedic astrology, or Indian or Hindu astrology, essentially is a is is a fun little. It's a fun little. I've actually been studying it now for over a decade. I don't. I don't use. But you it. don't call yourself a Vedic no, astrologer. No, I, I do not. Yeah. You know, because I haven't. In order to call myself a Vedic astrologer, I'd have to do a lot more Vedic astrology readings and charts which I don't it's it, it is a, a well, hobby numerology of sounds quicker to get to where you need to go with people it, anyway it, it is much quicker yeah much quicker Vedic astrology is is um, <laughs> it, my, my, my my brain that loves to study systems loves to delve into all the various systematic approaches I call it the wild wild east <laughs> okay and because it's it, it, it is a fascinating study but there's some dirty little things about it. Mm -hmm. For example, um, you know, some of the great writings on Vedic astrology, some of it is relevant today and some of it isn't. You know, one of the great writings of Parashara Hora Shastra, it's called, you know. Okay. The book, well, Parashara was a uh, Sort of one of the godfathers of Vedic astrology, a great sage. Well, what I don't understand, the the yeah. all I know about Vedic astrology is that instead of being a Sagittarius, I'm a Scorpio, yeah, yeah. and my rising sign is an Aries, and that's more important than yeah. the fact that I'm a Scorpio. That means that I'm really a. Um, it takes Western astrology Pisces. and it flips it. It makes it really it inside it. out, and I yeah. I have really committed to being a Sag with a moon in Cancer and instead yeah. I'm a Scorpio with a Pisces rising and the Pisces rising is the most important part about me right, right. <laughs> okay so you, you got to understand that um, when it when it gets translated right um, I mean are they looking at a different sky well, or was the sky one is a tropical based system older? which is based on the seasons yeah um, and and that started over 2,000 years ago Western astrology where they where they based literally on the on, it's seasonal, you know, on, on the equinox. Western. Western. Yeah. Where where it's sidereal in um, uh, in Vedic astrology, which has to do with the actual movement or the procession of the equinoxes. This is all really fun. And see, none of that stuff makes a difference to anyone. It's just what works for you, right? The, the, the idea with Vedic astrology is that it's, yes, it'll, it may change your, your moon sign and your rising and all that stuff, your sun sign. And they're more of a lunar system, so their moon sign is way more important than your sun sign. Over here, we're like your sun sign. And the moon signs a little it's bit secondary. It's just like what's happening emotionally. Yeah. And by the way, guys, Vedic astrology is what they do in India. And yeah. I guess, you know, well, there's also Chinese astrology. But anyway, right. we won't go into all that. We'll Look, it's a about... fascinating study. <laughs> they do pride themselves on, on, on the predictive, predictive aspect know. of it. But, but, but the, it, how do I phrase this? There's a lot of abuse with Vedic astrology. It's the most abused system that I know of. As much as I love it and study it and I think it's fascinating and I'm still looking into different you know testing it in various different ways there is there isn't a lot of agreement on a lot of different things you know um, and there is a fatalism that sometimes seeps in well the Indians uh, the society tends to lock people in anyway like they still have a caste system That's so right. it would make sense that their astrology would be limiting in that way like this is your destiny and you can't get out of it yeah, so um, in, in the Western world, we're, we're a little bit more psychological as far as working through uh, patterns and, and changing our lives, and, and, and you could come from nothing and be the president. Yeah. Right? Over there, there, there is definitely more, like you mentioned, the caste system, but the, the mentality that that has come from the caste system is, is, is somewhat limiting. Um, and, 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 but also, some of the, you know, this is an ancient form of astrology that, some of these older writings are, are written in very hyperbolic, you know, like, you know, like you're going to be hit by a, a truck when you're seven, but then you'll be a billionaire after that. They say crazy, you know, like, you, you know, you'll have seven mules 
by the time you're 50. And, you know, and you hey, just... we just, can all use a few mules, Who can't you know? use a mule I here know, and there, I can you know? use a mule. And, you know, that's... <laughs> Cut back some of this brush. Exactly. <laughs> a little wild over yeah, here. I feel like I I'm in the jungle. It's pretty on, on the camera, though. Oh, it is? Know? Okay, good. Yeah, that's that looks good. good. Um, but the, the correct usage of it by, by, by the handful of practitioners that I know of that are really good, um, they translate into a modern system. And there is some fascinating things that, that these people can do, you know? But I have to say that there's a lot of people in that world that I think are screwy. Mm -hmm. now, now I happen to follow, you know, follow sort of the the writings and the and the teachings of a, a gentleman by the name of K. N. Rao, who is I think arguably the foremost authority. Is he there? He's in Delhi. He he runs a school of astrology that I think it has thousands of people, and um and he's very scientific. <laughs> right know, up your alley. Fifty thousand, you know. Um, horoscopes he studied and he's very systematic and he's Im improved upon and, and um, some of the older you know processes and doing things and he, he's fascinating and he has a he has some people that he you know the study underneath him that are American that are that are fascinating mm -hmm. and um, look there there's it's a it's really interesting for me it's my hobby to study it yeah okay but 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 the reason why it's abused is that if you don't understand the the, the, the rules <laughs> and how things get modified and if you don't have that mind to really understand it and test it out and you're operating off old school ways of looking at things you can tell people a lot of fatalistic terrible things and screw oh, yeah. the hell out of them that's or, awful well it it, it is awful. then it becomes their matrix it becomes their matrix or you, you tell them all this <laughs> magnificent things are going to happen in their life and, and then they, they can be disappointed and then they become disappointed <laughs> If, and, it's, if it doesn't happen right are you so are you a virgo then because you're a libra so it pushes you so the way it works is it pushes people back to the previous sign yeah and then you're an aries rising aren't you in western or vedic in western sagittarius oh you're a sag rising I thought, yeah. why did i think you were an aries so then are you still a, a sag rising or are you no i become a scorpio rising a scorpio rising but see there's strange things that happen because you have to again you have to look at the, the total picture for example I'm a moon in Scorpio in Western astrology, but in Vedic astrology, I, I have a Scorpio rising. So the so the Scorpio maintains itself, but in a different way. Okay, but if you had a moon in in Gemini, then that wouldn't have been true. No, it wouldn't have, but it is true. That's true. <laughs> I like to deal with facts. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Look, it it's an interesting thing. I think if people want to uh, be, I would suggest that they. Um, read up on on uh, on who they're going to get a Vedic astrology reading from, um, and their philosophy on things, and, and their interpretation of things. And if if, if um, you know if someone they know have gone to them and recommend them, and um, uh, it, it's do you, it, do you do that for people? No, I don't. No, you don't. Okay. No, it, it you know I look at it for myself and maybe some friends and have it has it been has it been accurate for you in your own chart, or do you just use it as a tool? I don't know. And I know that's that sounds like a cop out answer, but it it there is. I'm working out the kinks, mm -hmm. so give me another twenty years. Okay. And um, and <laughs> you'll then come back in twenty years, and you'll talk I'll about it. I'll come back in twenty years and let you, and let you know what I discovered about what works and doesn't work, because I, I I I it needs it. There's you know look, and there's different ways of doing things. The reason why I call the wild wild east is there's different schools of Vedic astrology, you know that have hold completely different systems. Hmm. Can you imagine all these different people and they're being all like well, things are you know I gonna happen this way and they all disagree? But if you saw that movie, um, uh, Lion, did you see right. Lion? I, I there are so many different like like India is massive. I mean, in the United yeah. States we have one language. Yeah. You know, but in India and because of how old India is, I could see different different yeah. areas in India developing Certainly. their own. Yeah. It's a fascinating study. I mean, there's like 80 languages. Or I mean, I don't even remember. I happen to like the culture, and, uh, regardless of the caste system, which I'm not, you know, I'm not a big fan big of. Fan of caste <laughs> You're systems. not a fan of the caste no, system? No, I'm not. But, but, I res <laughs> but I respect their culture, and I respect the people. I think they're yeah. beautiful people. Yeah. I think Vedic astrology is a fascinating study. It just has to be done in a way that isn't so fatalistic. Yeah, or, and, and 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 you need research, and you need to test yeah. things, and some things may not work that you were taught. Yeah, that's that's the problem with many things today. Is if someone has the teacher and say, "Well, this is the way it works," and then you bring that information to people, and by golly, it doesn't really work that way. Are, are you going to tell that person? Well, gosh, 
this is supposed to work, so somehow you got it wrong. Your life should have done that. Or do you look at facts and say, why didn't this work? And then you research it to find what the problem is mm -hmm. and, and, and crack the code. If you can't do that, you're just re regurgitating information. Right. And when people are coming to you, it's a great responsibility to make sure the information you're giving to them is accurate, that you that you have a lot of experience in that area, right. and that you, you want to get them to the promised land, which is a more fulfilled, happy, integrated lifestyle with plenty of free will to make those decisions, but with a lot of understanding as to what you were coming through, what came through this, this lifetime for you. It's really great that you speak with such a sense of responsibility and that yeah. you take it seriously. It's really, really great and, and admirable. Um, can, you, can you do your, um, I know you said you had done some numbers numerologically. And yeah. All, and I don't know, you didn't, really, you didn't really go into it. Like I wasn't sure if you were talking about where we are as a country, where we are politically, where we are as a society, where LA is. I wasn't sure what you meant. But so, whatever it is, I, I'm open to hear. I think we're all I think, I think we're all politically um, fascinated with 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 the pers persona and the personality of, of the of the president, yeah, Donald Trump, and um, uh, he's a, he's he's a fascinating study also. Yes, so funny. That's very true. Uh, one of the more important numbers that he holds, the eighteen nine, is that his life path? More than his life path is sort of I call it the ultimate goal number. Right. Yeah. Is um, I've been calling it the Trump number for many years, way prior to him becoming. Well, wasn't that telling? President. Yeah. <laughs> we and, should have uh, just asked you who would win. Well, you know, it's interesting. Oh, that that was another thing, um, because um, it is true that I suppose you could say to some degree Trump had more favorable um, influences than than Clinton did, but um, you know, we all have our political biases. And um, so we can, we can we can decide not to look at something a certain way, and that's that's you know there's an astrologer who you know, I, I think he's a proficient astrologer, who is um, th that I used to read from time to time. He mm -hmm. did some interesting insights that were a little bit different than, mm -hmm. than normal stuff that I, mm -hmm. I read, and but he was very biased politically, and so he would discuss these things, and that's why it's very important that you you look at things objectively. Mm -hmm. Right, but um, however, uh, this eighteen nine, right? Um, Which is Trump's more than life path number. Turns out eighteen nine can be associated with international big business and distribution, wealth Which and power. Which is what he does, um, right? And uh, but also it is also synonymous with sort of underworld activities and sort of the dark parts of ourselves. Uh huh. So um, you know, why is that person now in president? What does it represent, right? Mm -hmm. And um, also, 189s can can sometimes suffer from paranoia. Um, he is paranoid. Well, again, I, I, I'm not going to make any judgments. I'm telling you about what the number just just means, and okay. which which people have been coming to me for 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 decades, and and this isn't anything new information. I've told them about this number yeah. and what it means. And yeah. okay. now th there is the 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 typical 189 um, actually uh, um, has a tremendous amount of power that they usually sabotage out of deep-seated guilt of not wanting to abuse their power. It's one of the more fascinating numbers. And, um, and there can be, um, in some cases, abuse uh, of power or, or money in the family. Mm -hmm. And some dark secrets in the family. That, that, that is not an uncommon interpretation of an 18-9. However, there's a small percentage of 18-9s that are the, the ones that claim that power earlier in their lives, right? Instead of giving it away because of some deep-seated guilt or fear that they would abuse it inappropriately because maybe it was abused in their environment growing up, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a small percentage of 18-9s that claim that power early, but if they don't heal the wound, and many of them carry some very deep-seated, very subconscious wounds about abuse of power and money. They can sabotage themselves later on. Keep in mind that Trump has, has uh, gone, his businesses have gone bankrupt four times. Right, and and we could say that this is a you know subconsciously sabotaging himself. Right, mm -hmm. so look, it is it is an interesting study. Um, again, I was very well aware of his chart before he became president, and and the mentality. The question is, as we talk about those timing factors, those cycles, mm -hmm. right? And I said that he was in a favorable cycle. Um, 
you know, and which which did ultimately land him the presidency, right? Or was indicative of that, right? Right. We don't know for sure in these things because I don't like to crystal ball stuff. Mm -hmm. But he was in a favorable cycle. Yeah. And um, um, although you know, when I looked at it, you know, you 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 think, gosh, well, you know, the polls, and you, you get caught up in these other things. But objectively, he was in a better cycle to win, right? But if you look at what's ahead, right? So one of the things I do is I research. Um, situations and dynamics that are related to what's going on maybe in the past. So I went back to Richard Nixon. Okay. Because there's been a lot of talk about impeachment. Right, right. Of, you know, abuse of power. Some parallels. Some possibly. parallels. Possibly. Yeah. We don't know, yeah. but possibly. We don't know, right? Right. So, but, the, you know, is, is there, so I went back and I said. And I, you looked at him. I looked at, <laughs> no, he has a different chart, oh, so okay. he's a different person. And the numbers are different, but I look at the cycles. When did you know, Watergate start to take yeah. hold. Yeah. What numerological cycle was he in? Uh huh. And and at, at what time you know was he basically forced out by his own party, with respect to saying, "Look, we're going to impeach you unless you step down." When did that happen? What number was he under influencing that? And what I found is starting in the fall of this year, um, going into next year. It was the same exact cycle Nixon was under. Starting in the fall of this coming yeah, 2000, September, September 2017. September, October would start, not, let me, I said starting in that period, yeah. which is exactly what the time frame that Watergate started. How long the, was the cycle of Watergate? Are we well, it was like, in the fall. Was uh, it because we were, I mean, I don't, I don't remember. It was in the, was it like it, so I guess it, when things really started heating up on that, it was in the fall. So it was around, it was around October. Um, and then I think the following year, May, was when it completed or came to a head. No, no, I think it was no, it was August. I'm trying to remember what month it was, but it was um, it was about a little less than a, a little bit less than a year. I see. A time frame. Right. Right. So, but but when things started heating up, was in that. Part. And it, it is true that 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 um, again, there's not that many cases to look at impeachment. And, you know, there's only no. one. Right. Where, where at least it was on the table. Now, um, Bill Clinton was impeached in, in the House, not in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I hadn't even looked at that, but but there there wasn't, the parallels are, are more so with Nixon, you know, that many yes. people have made. Yeah. So I, I looked at that and, and, and I saw, is that a coincidence that he's coming under that same, same exact cycle. cycle, right? Because we're talking about leaving office, not just being impeached in the House, leaving office. So. What I know about that number is that it, it, it rules conflict. It's a warring kind of energy. And it can also um, restructure one's career job. But that can mean a lot of different things, right? But it, noticing how much conflict he's already had prior to even going into this cycle, it would look like it would increase as we went into the fall. Wow. Right? Yeah. And um, I also noticed- in, There are certainly things coming to a head. Things starting to come to a head. I also noticed in the spring of next year, starting um, in f February, um, March, and then a peak in May of next year. Now, again, I haven't really done like a massive amount of research in this because there's not a lot to go on. You know, there's very few cases of this in, in American history. But I would say, say that um, unfortunately things aren't going to get smoother. And that it could result in some shift or change in his job picture next year. And with that, we are coming to an end of our show. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that's great. Um, did you want to say one more thing? Because I think we're. <laughs> I thought that was a great cliffhanger. So that's why I was like, "Oh, this is a uh, look. This is great." <laughs> look, these are these are potentials. These yeah. Are, these are potentials, and the decisions that you know, he makes in order to, to get along and maybe work things out might be helpful to him, right? And uh, nothing is etched in stone, really. Um, yeah. Even though when I go back in time with people's charts, it seems like I, I was with them the whole time. But, but just the... Know,
the fact that you even saw that or even yeah. said that that he's coming under the same a, a similar cycle as the Watergate incident and the fact that we're already hearing that yeah. comparison I mean there is certainly something there. well I so. thought it was I thought it was a remarkable coincidence yeah right and whether the same result remains to be seen but the one thing we know you know obviously I would counsel him to to change if you, if you had the opportunity well if I had the opportunity yeah. I would counsel him you know yeah. look I we because want, we can co-create we can we can right. co-create we can take responsibility for it and we don't have to set ourselves up right you know nobody wants to see you know damage done to the country on either side right of course and, and um as i've gotten older i've become, become far more moderated in my my view of things on a political level and just in general of finding the balance between both sides very yeah. Kabbalistic thing to find the balance in both sides, right? I'm surprised that you're not on my show talking about the Kabbalah. Like you'd yeah. be like a, well, you'd, you'd be a great. Yeah. So, so there, there's, you, you, you want to find common ground, and that's one of the problems today. You know, is that we attack each other in the extremes. Think about it. We're in the 2000s, right? What does two represent? The two sides of everything. It's d duality. It's the the illusion that that. I'm all right here, and they're the you know the dark evil lord on that well, side. Well, we are bec uh, becoming a lot more of an us and them society. It's a polarized that situation. We didn't have as much right. before. <laughs> and and it isn't it isn't good, and it's not healthy. But again, there's part of a it's a part of a plan where we're ultimately going to be going through some very powerful transformational stages where we realize that that is n not going to help us have the life we want. You know, but we might have to go through some growing pains in order to figure that out, right? right? So, we are getting to the end. Yeah. And that was a good way to sum it up. Right. Um, why don't you let people know where you are, where they can mm -hmm. find you, um, you know, just so that they can reach out. I don't know if you want to tell them your website, whatever you want to say. So, yeah, I mean, um, I'm actually revamping all that. As you know, there's the... The, uh, the new plans being set in motion to get all this stuff out to a larger audience, but um, you know, but the older website I think is still up right now, which is joshcode.com, j-o-s-h-c-o-d-e.com, and uh, people can you know email me off of that website, mm -hmm. and, um, um, and and set up sessions if they're if they're interested in, in, in sessions mm -hmm. um, with me, which are about at least an hour, mm -hmm. you know, and um, and so that's one way to, to contact me. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, this was, thank you again. This is the very first time I've had, you know, Josh, and I've had a numerologist, and I'm very yeah. honored that you came, you know, that you came out. Um, maybe you'll come again. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Again, this is Metaphysically Speaking with myself, Mystic Madison, where I have out-of-the-box conversations with enlightened guests who are specialists in the fields that we are dying to know more about. So thank you again for joining us, and we will see you here next week, Sunday at noon. So thanks for having me. You're welcome. Hey, okay, bye for now.